Hey everybody, welcome to CSS Hacks for the wonderful Elementor page builder in WordPress and today is all about double buttons without the need for add-ons or extensions and can be done in the standard free version of Elementor. So let's jump over to the back end where I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to build this. So we're going to be using the icon list widget and the first thing are we remove the one we don't need and then we must give each of them some sort of tag. So for the purpose of the demonstration here, I'm just gonna put a dead URL in of hashtag, and then we're gonna move over to the advanced tab and we're gonna give it its only custom class that we're gonna need of DB list button. And then we're gonna move into the custom CSS where we're gonna target that class. And then we're gonna target the Elementor specific class of Elementor icon list items. And the first thing we're going to give it is a flex, which we'll now see the items are laid across a row because that's the default the way that flex will work. We could specify it the other way around if necessary. And we want to have that content centered. And to do that, we just add justify content center. So there we go, a very simple method for doing that. And now we're going to target each of the individual buttons that we wish to make with that same class of DB list button and the Elementor specific class of icon list item instead of items and then the a tag. So let's give it a block display property and let's give them some padding, 20 pixels and there we go. So we've already got a basic setup that we need to do so but let's just control it a little bit further to ensure that these items don't grow or shrink we can add this flex property of zero, zero auto, which the two zeros basically specify whether or not the item can grow or whether it can shrink. And the auto could be replaced with a fixed size statement of 200 pixels or X amount of M's or whatever you need to. But this basically says auto, whatever the content describes me to be. So there we go, we've got our basic setup ready to style each of the separate buttons. So again, we target each of the icon list item and we need to say we want to talk to the first one. So let's bring in that nth child statement and talk to number one. And we want to target the A tag and we're going to give it a background color of red. Well, first one, let's go for green. Okay, and let's give it a bit of border radius for as per the demonstration. And the way we're going to do this, the way, the way the border radius works, it works from the top left to the top right to the bottom. Right. So basically a clockwise direction around. So we've got four numbers to put in place. And we'll have five pixels on the first corner, then zero, then zero, then five pixels. And then we should actually have our rounded corners on the left hand edge. So now we start our next button. So literally let's just copy, paste, change the second child and change the color and switch around these numbers here. So we wanna have zero, then five pixels and so on. So let's just change that around. Now we don't specify pixels when we put a unit in that zero, okay? Just to be clear on that, you just have to put a zero in place. So now we have our two buttons. Now we could style the link color itself using the widget or for our customizer, but let's just add it to both buttons and let's give it a white color. So there we go, we've got our buttons. Now the little 3D effect was done simply by adding a border bottom of five pixels, solid gray, and there we go. We've got this little three dimensional effect. And we can use that when we come to actually say what happens when you click on the button to give it that sort of three dimensional movement. So again, we're gonna target all of the buttons themselves. So I'm just gonna actually copy this statement here. We could target them individually for different effects if you so wished. And on this item here, let's just go in a little bit closer. We're gonna add this active state. So this is like the hover states, etc. This basically detects a mouse has clicked on it. And what we're going to do is basically remove the border bottom from it. Okay. Oops, I missed a dot there, which is highly important. And there we go. We now have got these buttons that when you click on them, you actually see that the gray border itself disappears. But let's make that a little bit more magical. And let's just adjust, adjust the margin top to the same thickness as the border. 
and that gives us a nice little clicky effect. Now transitions between the two states you can see is quite smooth because the elemental items already have a transition built in. But in my demo I actually have a slightly more bouncy button. So let's go back to where we're targeting both our buttons and let's paste in our own transition. And what we can see we've got the transition property affecting all transforms that happen so the border radius the border changing and the margin changing and it happens over 0.35 of a second and then we use this crazy cubic bezier statement which if you're into animation you might understand what it is just google the thing but this basically is what's going to give it that nice bouncy effect okay so we now have a more bouncy button when we click upon it Okay, so there we go. There's a simple way of creating a double button with an Elementor free edition using the icon list widget. And if you wanted, you could take it a step further and create yourself a third button. And we'll quickly just rattle through that style in this third button is, again, a cut and paste routine. And we target our third button. Okay, now we've got three buttons in place. And we just don't need to have any border radius on the middle one. And let's just change the color. And there we go. And now if we run to the front end to preview this, we can now see we have three bouncy clickable buttons using the icon list widget. So I'm hoping you've learned a little bit more about CSS and the uses of it within Elementor. And that's all from me.